appears that Dan is not planning to claim to run for president. <laughs> You'll notice the word again here at the, the end of the slide. But uh, nonetheless, Wi Fi has many subtle details that can be used uh, to your benefit or harm uh, used badly. Um, a reminder and invitation please photograph things, tweet things. Uh, for reasons I'm clear, we <laughs> from the organizing team or uh, more than a team to please use the Foss Asia. Uh, at the name, the, the at, at Foss Asia instead of hash Foss Asia. But other than that, please three bots. Right, hi guys, I'm uh, uh, Daniel, and um, I'm go going to uh, go through a, a talk on uh, why Wi-Fi is, um, uh, like these days, much uh, worse, and um, of course getting worse, and how you can improve it. So it's called Making Wi-Fi Great. Um, I've got a background in software engineering, but then uh, these days, I think uh, if you're interested in physics, if you're interested also in some of the, the, kind of the theory uh, like, uh, behind these things, it can be quite useful. So um, often, um, like Wi-Fi, um, everywhere you'll be uh, in a conference, you'll be in a cafe, you will have um, be trying to connect, and you you'll be um, either uh, you can't connect to an access point, you can't connect to your phone, um, you really have a lot of issues, and in everywhere, the only place pretty much you can get really good Wi-Fi is if you're um, not in a uh, like dense urban environment, so like the countryside. Or, or somewhere kind of um, perhaps with like lower density. So the, to understand why th this is the case, you actually um, the the list of, of sources of issues pretty much starts with um, with a congestion. So there's so many sources of interference, and even if they they aren't um, at like the frequencies that are used in Wi-Fi, they still in, uh, can interfere. Um, other, other kind of um, main issues really are, are the actual location of your access point or the access points you're trying to connect to, and also the kind of distance therefore. Um, and, um, and then there's some, some other um, perhaps less, less uh, um, key items here, but certainly the, um, how these things are set up and also uh, the actual uh, OS as well. So if you have um, uh, enterprise access point, typically you you have a much more robust, much more um, fine-tuned uh, OS and like um, uh, stack, including the radio um, firmware as well. Traffic also, so clearly um, you, I mean, even even you have like traffic, say, which is 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 like um, uh, traffic that you expect. You also have uh, like a, 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 tra a traffic which is background, like app, like things like. Um, other kind of um, protocols which are not really what you actually want to route. So those can, of course, take away radio time um, from, from uh, the actual traffic you really want. So we'll later have a look at some of those things. So I'd say um, one of the main things here is, is if you have a basic um, kind of like a home access point, like an, an ASUS or um, whatever, um, uh, typically, these are optimized for consumers, and so the the kind of difference here is is in enterprise hardware, you uh, you actually typically separate uh, the role of the access points um, from routing packets. Now, um, one of the the other kind of um, powerful features of enterprise uh, kit typically is also you can you can plug it in anywhere. Um, sorry, you can plug in. Uh, power into an Ethernet cable from anywhere and then inject it and run it from um, an Ethernet cable. So that's uh, also um, obviously useful in your home environment as well, since clearly then you can put your, your router somewhere um, in your home in a good location and get good, good like signal strength and good behavior. Typically also, um, when you have um, like many more APs also um, in an uh, enterprise kit, you can also manage them um, from, a, from, like from a, a central location and therefore you can see um, the, the configuration if they're online, what uh, OS they're running, um, uh, the, the, the MAC addresses, IP addresses, whatever. And then also clearly um, the, the vendors who produce uh, enterprise kit 
They, um, they do a lot of validation. So they, they have uh, like stable lab environments and RF environments where they can, they can actually test in a, a very complete way, which almost certainly um, home routers don't get that, that, that level of, of uh, validation. Um, I mean, therefore, also security is a, uh, also something uh, to consider as well. Often, um, a lot of these these like brands, Cisco, HP, so forth, they're actually really expensive. So you will you will al almost never find anyone buying and, and having those at home. So really, there's a, a, a like a new um, perhaps um, in the last ten years um, a new kind of wave of of uh, devices from both Microchip and um, uh, uh, UBNT, which, which actually is optimal kind of uh, value for, for the features and for also the, the, um, the validation and the, um, the uh, features that you, are, you also get. So, um, moving on to to one of the um, one of the, the actual main uh, sources of issues with like Wi-Fi is um, sighting. So clearly, if you if you have your your AP um, I, um, a, a near a wall, then you can actually get a lot of signal loss through like say a concrete wall or like um, like a hard um, like bricks, for example, here. So. Uh, when you when you place your AP in your house or in your, your environment, you really also must consider these scenarios. So putting it perhaps um, somewhere more centrally, where where um, where the actual angle for clients would be wouldn't be through so much kind of brick or concrete, would help a lot. Um, and, and of course, clearly there wouldn't necessarily be. Um, a table or, or like a, a fiber point where, um, for for you to plug it in, but that's where if you have power over Ethernet, or you you also separate your your radios um, a, a, and access points therefore from your router, then you can um, like mount it for example on the ceiling over here, and so also that's an important thing as well. Now, one of the re and the actual reason why this this um, uh, distance is, is one of the key things simply is <clears throat> um, the further you you get away from your access point, you get a, a, a like um, a division like a fraction of the energy at your like from your clients and from your access point. So, um, also this also as well works for frequencies. So, if you're using a five gigahertz access point or radio. Um, then the signal is, is um, half the, the actual energy uh, like for a given distance than the two gigahertz radio. So, so you also must take into account um, that you actually get, actually get weaker signals as you're going higher um, in frequency. Um, so even, even if, if, say, you have a, um, a 5 gigahertz um, um, access point, you actually may, may get a lot more attenuation. Uh, but then also... Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so uh, the actual noise floor is really one of the key things. So if I move on to the, the signal-to-noise ratio, so if you actually look at the spectrum here, um, what you'll find is, is you'll find like a, like a level of background noise here, which is, is, is kind of lower band here, like minus 96 uh, dBm here. And then um, in this case, at like 5 gigahertz, channel 36, you're seeing like about 30, uh, what, uh, 65 dBm signal here. And so um, when there's more attenuation, with higher frequencies, like say at like five gigahertz, what you'll find is uh, you'll generally have a lower noise floor because um, other sources of interference from your neighbors and so on are also attenuated better, which gives you an advantage. And so that's also why um, you can also use like wider channels. So channel width is also something you can adjust when you're setting up your access points, uh, 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 the radios. Yep, so, so normally um, 
much of the much of the the uh, like uh, uh, consumer radios um, and access points are 100 milliwatts uh, transmit. That generally is uh, the the regu um, the uh, regulatory limit. Uh, question here. At uh, 2.4 or at 5 gigahertz? At uh, 5 gigahertz, yeah. Channel 56, yeah. Okay. Because um, actually, so you actually haven't got uh, that much uh, channel, uh, like that um, uh, 80 megahertz channel width possible at uh, 2 gigahertz <laughs> on Wi-Fi. And I was just worried about the, the transmission power because at 2.4, the standard is 42 megawatts. So I was like, how do you get a, something at 138? At least in Europe, that wouldn't be allowed. At 2.4 gigahertz. Yes, correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that certainly would be violating the the um, limits of of 100 milliwatts, really, which are the the limits at uh, two gigahertz. Anyway, so um, why? So how do you actually translate this this signal um, uh, ratio to to to, uh, to the actual throughput that you can achieve with your devices? So um, what actually happens is is um, when, when your, your AP is talking to your devices, they, the actual signal noise ratio and channel width dictates the maximum speed of data transfer, so the actual phi rate. So um, what you see is, is here we have a signal noise ratio of 32 decibels here. So like the kind of noise floor to the, the actual signal strength here. And that translates um, in this table here um, to a certain modulation coding scheme, MCS7, which is, is a certain kind of um, a certain um, a a strategy for, for encoding signals. And so um, 11AC, um, 80 megahertz channel width. So we know it's MCS7. So how does MCS7 translate to the actual speed that you'll, you'll get over the air? So there's a, a second, second table in the standards which says for MCS7, you'll use 64 cam modulation. And at 80 megahertz with a short gauge interval, you'll get um, a, a, a 325 mega, uh, megabits a second raw phi rate. So maybe you'll see perhaps half of that in practice. But so that's... So this illustrates how, how the actual signal noise ratio and channel on your Wi-Fi. Now, so um, if you select, yeah, so later we were saying, so earlier we were saying that, that uh, 5 gigahertz, you have more uh, um, link um, headroom for your signals. So, but then um, the wider the channel, the more interference with other channels. So if you're, say, if you have voice over IP phones, or if you're just browsing or something like that, um, in certain environments, like uh, in an internet kiosk or in, in uh, simpler uh, scenarios, then it definitely makes sense <coughs> to choose um, narrower channels. So in this case, in like this conference Wi-Fi, uh, channel width is, has been selected for um, uh, 40 megahertz at like 5 gigahertz and 20 at 2 gigahertz. So there isn't any, any wider channels um, like 40 megahertz at, at like uh, 2 gigahertz because of, of too much congestion. So really, what you want to do when you're putting your, your, your router at home is you want to conduct a, um, a uh, spectral scan to understand what interference is already there, what other access points are transmitting, and so what channel can you select? What you can do is you can, of course, you can have a very poor approximation using a um, an app on your phone, <coughs> and um, here what you'll see is in a, in a well-defined environment, typically all access points at like 2 gigahertz will be on channels 1, uh, 6, and 11. And so um, if you choose a channel which is um, in between these and overlaps with, say, like channels 1 and 3, then you'll get a lot of um, co-channel interference. So uh, uh, at home, if you select channel one, uh, one, six, or eleven, you'll typically get better behaviour. Um, obviously, you might might want to those scan because they're, they're, the existing APs may be on on other channels. Um, typically, 
Let's see. So typically, um, if you enable uh, auto-channel selection on your access point, it'll, it'll actually uh, select something that has minimal RF energy, which perhaps an average could be like um, channel 8 or 9 or something like that. Or in this case, well, so that one's in fact uh, two channels wide. So yeah, 8 or 9. But then you'll get interference from um, many more access points. In fact, from eight access points, if any of these transmit, then it'll interfere with your, your, um, your access points. So better choosing, say, 1 or 6 or 11. And also turning off the, the, the um, automatic selection. The fact that they, if you have them grouped on the same channel, each of them interferes only with a smaller number of channels, that's fine. But aren't they, aren't the, channel, aren't the access points that do this sort of sacrifice their access to spectrum because they're now landing right in the middle of the competing? Yeah. Well, so, so um, one of the, the kind of things is in the, the um, uh, dot 11 standards, um, when you have, um, let's see, when you're sharing channels uh, with other APs, you enable something called uh, RTS and CTS. And so when, when one of your devices wants to then transmit, um, it then sends a request uh, to the access point, which then broadcasts a, uh, like a, um, a message to all devices, um, actually on that channel and also other, other SSIDs as well, saying, um, a device wants to, to, to cross transmit, now allow a certain time window. So um, all devices on, on that channel will then, uh, like then allow that device then to, to like, uh, uh, um, transmit. And therefore, you have much, much better sharing of channels, or sorry, of like time um, on that channel. And, and that, that definitely uh, scales much better than if you, you either don't enable the RTS CTS feature or if you um, are in between channels, basically, uh, and then have like less, less clear communication with all the other devices on those existing APs. So that's uh, relatively straightforward. So antennas. So typically, um, you will see some, some routers having dual band antennas. And how it works, interestingly, is, is you have a loading coil in the middle. And then uh, one part of the antenna, um, which is optimized for a certain frequency, this is a quarter of, of the wavelength here. And then this is a second uh, different wavelength here. And so you'll, um, how this looks like on an, uh, a graph is that you will see the, the antenna resonates at two different frequencies here. And so, so that, that's how, how you have multiple um, multiband antennas, just in case you were curious. But then, um, always, there's a bit of a trade-off. So you lose efficiency at uh, other frequencies. So the routers that you see in the market with like three antennas, those have much worse behavior than having, say, um, internal antennas, which are, are, are not uh, dual band. <coughs> so obviously, the routers that, that you have in the market, the, the ASOS with the three big antennas, it looks really powerful, it like, feels good, but then actually it's, it, 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 it's, it's almost certainly much worse. What you can do is, um, okay, the actual spacing of the antennas is, is more than half the wavelength, so you, you've got to make sure that that's, um, they're like spaced out, but then they're normally fixed, so that's fine. Um, and then the other thing you can do is you can arrange them in an uh, orthogonal kind of way, which, which you, you never actually see. So I couldn't get a picture, I couldn't find a picture on, online t to in fact show you. But if you imagine these are the three antennas at the back of your router, you put one up, one kind of back and one sideways, then you actually have, you then uh, polarize in different orientations the signal, which then allows you to, to communicate with, say, um, uh, devices which, which in fact have perhaps only one antenna in uh, one kind of axis. So that, that definitely improves the, the uh, communication there. So in fact, uh, we can see this in, in enterprise APs because here, uh, these are arranged in different axes. So uh, yeah, and here we have 
we have, I think, uh, four antennas, yeah, two uh, five gigahertz and two uh, two gigahertz. Yeah, and they resonated di across at different frequencies. Oh, um, notably, the antennas, um, they aren't sticking out looking really powerful or anything. They're just on board, which, which makes things simple, really. And there isn't any, any uh, real benefit in having them off board if, if they are, um, say, like just omnidirectional. So one of the um, one of the, the other key issues in in uh, in like Wi-Fi is the hidden node issue. Um, so what you have is like say you have a, a, an access point, then you have like, um, like two small like two say like phones or laptops um, at like different ends, uh, like different areas, and the typically like clients are thirty milliwatts. So an access point is maybe 100 milliwatts, maybe higher, or at like 5 gigahertz. So um, clients X and Z can't hear each other. Hmm? Right, five minutes, okay. Right, so um, X and Z uh, can't hear each other. So there's actually a protocol here. Um, earlier I mentioned the, the RTS and CTS uh, protocol. So you can enable that. And even you can tune it, uh, enable it for frames reduced for, for, for small packets. Also, you can actually um, you can filter out background traffic by, by isolating each of the radios, the like 2 gigahertz radio and 5 gigahertz radio, on separate bridge ports. This, um, this is all kind of going to be online anyway, so you can look at this later. There's some uh, details which uh, we can admit. So, what do I use? Actually, I'm... Um, about to use anyway um, a new Mikrotik a half AC2. It's um, it's actually very very similar to this one here, and so this is uh, one of the existing ones and um, actually quite small. So it, it, it's not really big or fancy or flashy, but then actually they are very very um, practical, very very configurable. Um, the new model, which is um, available soon, it actually can route it to uh, gigabits a second because it has like dual uh, um, uh, an internal pathway with like uh, two like um, two one gig links uh, to the CPU actually, so um, which is is like double the normal the normal capacity. So there's some more some more information here. Um, you can kind of look through. One of the key things when you're buying um, a router is, or access point is having uh, an OS which is then updated on a regular basis and has like security updates uh, and so forth. Many uh, consumer ones don't actually, like they have maybe six months or a year of updates and then that's it. So it's better to, to have something which is, is um, a long term. So, um, Actually, this one is is about actually one hundred and four sing dollars, and um, it's available from our uh, local Mikrotik distributor, uh, uh, Gas Networks. So we're going on here. You can put up your hands. Very good. So um, this is my recipe for configuration. Um, later, you can have a look through on the PDF online. So no need to to go through this. There isn't time. And uh, let's see, and then I can do a quick demo of doing a live spectral scan to show you how to optimally select the channels. So this, let me just do this. Okay, let's just log in here. Okay, I need to make sure I'm on the five gigahertz channel here. Yep, good. Okay, and one, two. One second. Okay, so now it's, it's running a, 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 a like a heat map here, and we can see in fact um, from like uh, two four one two is like channel one, 
2472 is channel 11 here. So you can see how much uh, RF energy there is. And here, this environment is very, very noisy. But generally speaking, this is channel 6 here. So you can see white is the um, most, uh, most strongest signal strength, greater than minus 35 dB. 11 is also more congested. And, and here, it's kind of hard to say, but maybe there's less congestion here. So you, you of course, might say channel 1. So that was a quick, quick demonstration on how to assess. It's a waterfall, waterfall diagram in SSH. Yeah, exactly, in SSH, over SSH. You can also uh, do that um, with other kind of uh, approaches, <coughs> uh, with a, a GUI as well. So um, here's, my, here's a little kind of uh, summary of the, my tips on how to tune your Wi-Fi and also deploy a good um, like good uh, 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 network here and yeah finally um, I didn't cover things like uh, spectral regulation or security or, or new uh, 60 gigahertz 11x equipment uh, you can get this online it's um, at this URL here drop me a note if you have any any questions or are like doing anything interesting with Wi-Fi yeah, and any questions? Before we take a question, uh, do you want to set up? Good. Go, 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 go